Sarah opened the driver's side door and climbed in, numb from the tips of her toes to the top of her head. Lacey, Callie, and Jacob, all three missing and unaccounted for at their schools, and now this message, whatever it was. Her heart strained against the wall of her chest, the rhythmic thumps pounding in her ears. She needed to be on the move, going, going, going. But the note felt like it held a deeper, more threatening meaning than a few words asking a simple question. She stared down at the slip of paper, reading it over and over. Are you ready to play the game? Are you ready to play the game? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you... She looked at the backside, expecting to find something else. A message saying, Just kidding. Good luck with the release. But no. Nothing. Only the glaring, blazing question. It had to be coincidence, didn't it? Some ill-timed, cryptic joke being played on her by one of the light pole staff? Surely this ominous note didn't have anything to do with the kids disappearing, did it? Of course it does. Don't be an idiot. But what did it mean? The game? What game? Sarah flung the note into the passenger seat. Jesus, not right now. I have to go. She cranked the keys, and the Sienna's hybrid engine whispered to life. Before she backed out, she took one last glance at the light pulse office. Shelley stood outside at the front doors, watching from a distance. She waved, then gave Sarah a thumbs up as if to say, Everything is going to be okay. Sarah forced herself to wave back, then swung the minivan out of the parking spot and out into the lighter mid-morning commute. Come on, come on, come on, she said, willing the stalled traffic in front of her to get the hell out of the way. The promise of a faster trip had been broken by road construction three blocks down, and she sat at a dead stop, wedged so tightly in between two cars that a pedestrian would have had trouble squeezing between the bumpers. Move! She pounded the steering wheel with her palm, flashed a look at the note beside her, where it lay limp and lifeless, but foreboding and full of questions. She shook her head. Mother f- Move! She shouted again. But her demands went unmet, and she sat, trapped in a line of cars, imprisoned inside her minivan with no way out and no course of action other than to wait until the universe changed its mind. She briefly thought of abandoning the van where it sat to take off running. She was in good shape. She could do it. Three miles every evening on the treadmill while the kids did their homework wasn't a guarantee of finishing a marathon, but it was enough to keep up her conditioning and ensure that her slowing metabolism wouldn't allow too many fresh pounds around her hips. The thought of doing it, of jumping out and sprinting away, gave her a second to realize that she didn't know where she was going first. She had stomped on the gas pedal and went, eager to be moving, anxious to be heading toward whatever horrendous event was waiting, like a marine running toward the sound of concealed gunfire. How does one decide where to go first when two equally horrible things are happening at once? She tried to weigh the options. Lacey and Callie's school was closer, but Jacob was the youngest. But was he really missing or just hiding until someone found him? No, obviously not the latter, not with the girls missing too. And the note, the stupid, menacing note mocking her from two feet away. Are you ready to play the game? Are you ready to play the game?'